CBC Class 9 Math Extra Practice Questions from the Chapter Polynomials Without actual division, prove that this quadratic expression divides a given polynomial. If this term had not been there without actual division, all that you needed to do is basically one way to approach it is actually do the long division of this polynomial by this quadratic expression. If you get the remainder of the division to be equal to 0, then we can establish that x square minus x minus 2 will divide this polynomial. But we cannot do the long division, the actual division. So this question is therefore a more interesting one. We'll actually be using factor theorem and remainder theorem to solve this. Let's say the given polynomial is equal to p of x. So p of x equals 2x power 4 plus x cube minus 5x square minus 8x minus 4. It's a four step process to get to the answer. I'll discuss a little bit about steps 1 and 2. 3 and 4, I won't discuss it right now. Let's finish 1 and 2 and then look at 3 and 4 subsequently. First step is we're going to factorize this quadratic expression. Let's call that as q of x. p of x is our polynomial. q of x is a divisor, which is a quadratic expression by splitting the middle term. When we factorize it, let's say we get x minus a into x minus b is how this expression, this quadratic expression q of x factorizes. Then we can say that because it factorizes this way, the zeros of q of x will be equal to a and b. For example, if it is x minus 3 times x minus 4, then the zeros will be 3 and 4. If it is x minus a times x minus b, then the zeros will be a and b. Step 2, what we'll check is, we'll check out whether a and b are zeros of this polynomial also. So these are steps 1 and 2. Let's establish that it is the zeros of the quadratic expression are also zeros of the polynomial. Then we'll see what we deduce from it to understand and prove that this quadratic expression divides this. We'll come to steps 3 and 3 as I mentioned a little later. Right now, just given it here, don't worry too much about it right now. Start with step 1, which is factorizing the quadratic expression by splitting the middle term. The middle term is minus x. We'll have to break it into two parts such that the sum of those two parts is minus x and the product of those two parts is the product of the first and the last term. Product of the first and the last term is minus 2x square. We'll have to split the minus x into two components which will add up to a minus x and the product of those two components should be minus 2x square. So it's going to break up as minus 2x and an x. Sum is a minus x, product is a minus 2x square. So x square minus x minus 2 will factorize as x square minus 2x plus x minus 2. Take x common from the first and second term. So leave us with x times x minus 2. Take one common from the third and the fourth term. We'll again get an x minus 2 x minus 2 is common to both these terms. So x minus 2 times x plus 1 is what we have. So x square minus x minus 2 factorizes this way. We'll call it as q of x. So if q of x factorizes this way, then the zeros of q of x, zeros of q of x, which is this quadratic expression, will be equal to 2 and minus 1. How did we arrive at that? To find the zeros, essentially pick each of these factors. Take x minus 2 and equate it to 0. So you'll get x is equal to 2. That is one of the zeros. Take x plus 1 and equate it to 0. You'll get x is equal to minus 1. That's the second zero. So step 1, we factorized it. We found out the zeros of the quadratic expression, which is q of x, which is a divisor for us. Summarize till this point in a printed form before we go to step 2. Factorizing it by splitting the middle term, it splits as minus 2x and plus x. So it factorizes as x minus 2 times x plus 1. So zeros are 2 and minus 1. Step 2, as I had mentioned, will check out whether 2 and minus 1 are zeros of this polynomial. If 2 is a zero of this polynomial, then p of 2 will be equal to 0. So we're going to check out whether p of 2 is 0. Substitute all x in this expression p of x with a 2. So p of 2 will be equal to 2 times 2 power 4 plus 2 cube minus 5 into 2 square minus 8 into 2 minus 4 is what we have. 2 power 4 is a 16. 16 times 2 is a 32. Plus 2 cube is an 8. Minus 2 square is a 4. 4 into 5 is equal to 20. Minus 8 times 2, which is equal to 16. Minus 4 is what we have. At the positive terms, that gives us a 40. At the negative terms, that's another 40. 40 minus 40 is equal to 0. P of 2 is equal to 0. Therefore, 2 is a 0 of P of x. So that's what we wanted to check in step 2. We have checked that. If 2 is a 0 of p of x, step 3 will establish that x minus 2 is a factor of p of x. We'll come to step 3 in a while. Step 2, we have understood that one of the zeros of this quadratic expression is also a 0 of the polynomial. Let's run through the same process for the second one. I'll ask you to pause the video right now. Please pause it. 
check out whether p of minus 1 is a 0. Substitute all x in this polynomial with a minus 1 and find the answer. Did you get the answer to be a 0? Let's quickly run through that here. p of minus 1 is equal to 2 times minus 1 power 4 plus minus 1 whole cube minus 5 into minus 1 square minus 8 into minus 1 minus 4 is the answer. Minus 1 power 4 is a plus 1 so that makes it as a 2. Minus 1 cube is a minus 1. Minus 1 square is a plus 1 so minus 5 into plus 1 will make it as minus 5. Minus 8 into minus 1 is a plus 8. Minus 4 is what we have. Add the positive terms 2 plus 8 equals 10. Minus 1 minus 5 is a minus 6. Minus 6 minus 4 is a minus 10. 10 minus 10 is equal to 0. So p of minus 1 is also equal to 0 which means that minus 1 is a 0 of p of x. So we wanted to check in step 2 whether the zeros of the quadratic expression are also zeros of the polynomial. 2 is a 0 of the quadratic expression. It's also 0 of p of x. Minus 1 is a 0 of the quadratic expression. Minus 1 is also 0 of p of x. Consolidate till this point in a printed form. We found out p of 2 which is 0. So 2 is a 0 of p of x. We found out p of minus 1 which is also 0. So minus 1 is also a 0 of p of x. Step 3. If 2 is a 0 of p of x, then x minus 2 is a factor of p of x. If minus 1 is a 0 of p of x, minus 1 is a 0 of p of x, then x plus 1 is a factor of p of x. So because these two are zeros of p of x, now we have deduced using factor theorem that x minus 2 and x plus 1 are factors of q of x. That's where we started. Are now factors of p of x also. So step 3, what have we essentially deduced? From the zeros, we have established that x minus 2 and x plus 1 are factors of p of x. Next step, if x minus 2 is a factor of p of x and x plus 1 is also a factor of p of x, the product is going to be a factor of p of x. So x minus 2 into x plus 1 will be a factor of p of x. But x minus 2 times x plus 1 is nothing but x square minus x minus 2, which means x square minus x minus 2 is a factor of p of x. If it's a factor of p of x, then it will divide p of x without leaving a remainder, which is what we wanted to prove. Right? So essentially, we started by saying, let's split the middle term of this quadratic expression, find its factors, find the zeros. Then plug in those zeros into this polynomial and check out or establish that the zeros of q of x are also zeros of p of x. Then we said that if these two numbers, 2 and minus 1, are zeros of p of x, x minus 2 and x plus 1 will be factors of p of x. If x minus 2 and x plus 1 are factors of p of x, the product x minus 2 times x plus 1 will be a factor of p of x. This is nothing but the quadratic expression itself. If the quadratic expression is a product, is a, is a factor of p of x, then essentially the quadratic expression will divide p of x, the polynomial, without leaving any remainder. Before you leave, I want you to do two things. One, register at online.maxtude.com to get started with your CBSE class 9 online math tuition. It takes all of three steps and less than five minutes to get started with your CBSE class 9 online math tuition. Second, I want you to subscribe to this channel, youtube.com slash maxtude and turn on notifications. Until next time, stay healthy, stay safe and stay motivated.